Hello ladies and gentlemen, Reginald Scott here and this is the finished product. Yes, I have completed my little bike project. Um, a lot's changed since the last time you saw it. Basically I did a, a load in one go and unfortunately I didn't have time to record videos as I was going because I was in a bit of a rush to do it. And uh, I haven't actually ridden this bike yet. This is going to be its maiden voyage home back to my house and then hopefully if everything's fine uh, I'm going to set it up for my girlfriend and uh, we can go for a little bike ride but I'll tell you what I've done since last time you saw me or you saw the bike at least um, so all the cabling has been done that was a bit of a pain basically uh, putting this drailier on and pulling it into position while and tensioning the the wire or the cable uh, was very difficult to be honest with you very hard on the thumbs and there may be an easier way to do it but I don't know it um, but I managed to get that on and then I discovered that the chain that I had on the bike was too small so that meant rushing off to the bike shop and buying myself a chain um, because the drailier was basically stretched all the way forward uh, when I had the chain on and I hadn't noticed that until I started to try and change the gears and adjust the gears and unfortunately it wouldn't work so that required a bit of uh, expense nine quid for a new chain not too big a deal uh, what else has happened well the wheels back on uh, that's probably one of the first things you'd notice so got the wheel trued um, and it cost me about £12.50 because it needed tensioning as well um, I built this wheel twice in the end and uh, now I, I'm pretty good at building wheels uh, even though that was my first attempt I learned a valuable lesson about the spokes being different sizes I had no idea about that and when I pulled all the spokes out and laid them next to each other there was so little difference between them that I, I wasn't able to tell uh, but supposedly yes two millimeters difference between the uh, drive side uh, of the wheel and the sort of the dish side of the wheel because um, obviously the drive side is, is flatter uh, when you have the wheel in profile I put new brake pads on these center pull brakes um, and adjusted those so they will stop squeaking now which is great because it used to scream at you and uh, nobody likes squeaky brakes but there you go I, I find it annoying it's like nails on a blackboard for me so I had to do something about that uh, the frame that's had a bit of a polish and a clean um, all the labels that were on here have now gone um, they used to be various different sticky labels on here which I've cleaned off with um, nail polish remover and thinners and things like that and it's it's brought the frame up quite nice actually um, yeah there was one on here that looked very much like the word Isis it was 18 something but it, it looked like Isis and uh, the last thing I need is laser guided munitions being dropped on me from NATO so I decided to remove that I had a bit of trouble with the back brake actually now, if you notice there's these small brass fittings um, on the brake housings for the back brake these are handmade um, my father and I made these uh, on a lathe and a miller and the reason they're there is because there was nothing for the brake to pull against when I got the brakes in and I got the cables on uh, there's literally nothing that these cables fit into so we had to manufacture these to have something for the brake to pull against if you look down here where the gear cables are you'll notice that they have these little uh, troughs that the, the housing sit in I'll just move that back up here protect the frame um, and that's the sort of thing you usually have on a bike frame you usually have them here and here but on this frame nothing it's kind of an old-fashioned frame so it doesn't have one and so it needed something making uh, because I don't have the parts uh, available and what was happening was every time I turned the handlebars the whole thing was just moving so yeah these are handmade and they look really nice because they are brass so they'll stay this lovely brass color and they won't rust which is great um, got the handlebar tape on I am not particularly proficient at doing handlebar tape as you can see I need some practice there's a little few creases in it here I'm not sure whether it's because of the quality of the tape or whether it's just my lack of skill uh, taping handlebars is not something I do very often as you can see from the state of my other bike being that the white bar tape is now a kind of lovely grey and greeny brown colour um, but yeah it kind of matches the brown seat 
Mm, yeah, slightly different colour brown, but it's still nice. And it kind of finishes off those bars. Uh, as I say, I finished spray painting and painting this bar. Front wheel on, Continental Four Season tyres, all pumped up to 7 bar. And uh, that's about it. I've got some Keo Look pedals on here, which I'll be taking off when I get home because my girlfriend doesn't have uh, clipless shoes. And she wouldn't use them anyway because they kind of scare her. So I'm uh, going to modify those when I get back. But apart from that, that's it. The finished product. Um, bit of a headache. Hard work. Learned a lot doing it. So hopefully I'll be more confident the next time I decide to um, basically build a bike. And that was that. So I hope this has been fun for you. Informative. Uh, got any suggestions or comments or queries. You know where to put them. And uh, as always, thank you for watching and stay safe. Reginald Scott, over and out. There's a scene in The Rocketeer, the movie, where um, the guy's airplane that he's spent three years of his life building gets destroyed. And one of the main characters called Pee Wee, I believe his name is, says, um, well, that's the end of that. My girlfriend took a spill five minutes into our ride on the first downhill section. She got involved in a bit of a speed wobble and couldn't correct or overcorrect it and went down hard on the tarmac. So now she's getting um, into the bath, hopefully, and I'm gonna have to look after her. So, this bike lasted a sum total of one day and was ridden by its proper owner for a sum total of about 20 minutes, probably less than that. Ah, oh dear, oh dear. See you next time. So my girlfriend's wounds are dressed and she's had a bath with disinfectant and uh, I've bandaged her up. I'm going to have to keep an eye on her knee because that's um, probably the deepest of the wounds. And uh, make sure it doesn't get infected like what happened to me a few years ago when I got some road rash. I didn't look after myself and I ended up getting quite a nasty infection actually in arm and leg. But what I wanted to show you, after surveying the damage to the bike, is this. This is the helmet she was wearing when she crashed. It's uh, one of my old helmets. Um, but I'm very, very glad she was wearing this helmet because I just picked it up and I noticed this. That's where she hit the ground. She sh said she felt dizzy. Uh, initially and I just thought it was shock and I didn't even notice this helmet um, now that's the top part of the shell as you can see hit the ground with quite a lot of force you see this section here is where the impact started and then it kind of rolled off to the side 
and if you notice underneath the helmet is broken in one, two, three places. Well, four if you count the extra split there. So the thing basically did what it was supposed to do. I mean I can push down quite hard here and the helmet doesn't collapse but the impact smashed it. That my friend could have been her head so I'm very very pleased she was wearing a helmet because uh, she always protests and I always make her wear it. I've never wrecked a helmet like that before um, I've always ended up hitting the ground on my shoulder or something but she went head basically head first into the ground by the look of it. Um, I'll have to review the footage. Yes, I recorded the whole thing, but no, you won't be seeing it for obvious reasons. There you go. So, that's why we wear helmets. Hope that's a lesson to you. Reginald Scott, signing out. <laughs>